Welcome to the Athletic Football Show. We are here with Rookie of the Year, Defensive Rookie of the Year, as of last night, Houston Texans' Will Anderson. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it for, you know, the time taken for me to be here. Absolutely. We're excited to have you. I wanted to ask you something, like, pretty serious right off the bat. And why I wanted to ask you this because at every level of football that you've played, when yep. you're coming out of Alabama, everyone just talked about what you brought to a locker room and yep. the football character aspect to it. And I think that's a big reason the Texans were so comfortable moving up for you in the way that they did because they're trying to rebuild something and they knew that you could be a part of that yeah. over the course of your life how have you kind of built your value system when you think about how you want to approach the world who did you take that from yeah it's been a couple of people but the first person that I've always you know I have to give credit to is God first but really my grandmother who passed away my, my dad's mom um, she basically raised me almost and just getting to see how she treated people on a daily basis with the love like She'll meet you, and she swears she's been knowing you for about 20 years. <laughs> and that's the impact that I've always tried to have on people. Like, bro, just keep a smile on your face. And then just as far as, like, my mom and my dad raising me, you know, just treat others how you want to be treated. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, and they always say, like, the real world, like, they're not going to care about you like how we care about you. You know what I'm saying? So just go out and give love. Just be you. Be authentic. And then just having coaches in high school, Coach Fed, Coach Rogers, Coach Saban, and now D'Amico, like, Coach Banks, my rec ball coach, like all those coaches have played a big part in, you know, how my mentality is, who I am today. This year you go in, you're in Houston, and we talk about culture yep. and changing a culture. Yep. What does that mean to you? Like what is a football team's culture for people that maybe don't really understand what it, yep. all that it encompasses? Yeah, when people think about culture, like they just think about on the field. Yeah. And it's so much bigger than on the field because you don't get what you want on the field unless you do what you have to do off the field. And for me, my biggest thing is changing the culture is everybody is on an equal playing field. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter who you are in the building, you're just as important as the quarterback. You're just as important as the defensive end. You're just as important as the head coach, the GM, like no matter who you are, because we all play vital roles in our jobs to help this organization as a whole be better. And it's just treating everybody with respect. That's how you build relationships. That's how you build the culture. And that's how you get everybody wanted to be a part of something special when everybody's getting treated the same everybody's feeling in love and from a player standpoint I, I i said something like this in an interview before like a lot of people get mixed up with like thinking that players want approval and players don't want approval they just want to be shown the same love you know what i'm saying i think that's one of the key ways if you want a player to play great you show him the same love you show everybody else because he get that type of love he sees that oh this person is messing with me like they want me here they love me then that's how you get the best out of a player. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you show that you care. A lot of people don't come from backgrounds that have a lot of love, that have a lot of care. So when they make it here, that's what they just want to feel that. You know what I'm saying? And I think for me, that's what I try to give, like that love, that care feel, because, bro, we're all in this, bro. We're all trying to do something special. And it's just a beautiful thing to see when it happens. If you look at the way that the coaches, the, the trend and kind of how young coaches have gotten around the yep. league, and I think how emotionally attached and involved yep. coaches have gotten around the league, it's a lot of younger guys. But yep. you played for Nick Saban. And yep. how does Nick Saban balance being somebody who tries to set a standard, keeps mm -hmm. guys to that standard, but still feels like he's there for you in the ways that you need? Yeah, I think he does a great job of that. You know what I'm saying he's just so he's locked in all the time you know what I'm saying so you have no choice but to respect it and I've always said that Bama's not for everybody mm -hmm. it takes a certain type of understanding and mentality to go through you know what you have to go through from there and Coach Saban is a different type of coach he's going to love you he's going to care for you but at the end of the day he's trying to prepare you for when you do take that next step in life whether you're playing football or not you know what I'm saying so I think that's where you know his perspective and you know the way he cared about us that's where that came from like look like, y'all are kind of like my sons. Like, I'm going to love y'all, but I'm going to love y'all hard enough to know, like, when you get out in the real world, when you get out of this place, that is going to be, like, something that you've been through, that you know how to handle and stuff like that. So I think he did a really good job of helping us with that. There was that moment, I think, after you guys lost in the college football playoff yep. where you and Bryce were sitting up there and he mm -hmm. made you guys stay yeah. and just wanted to communicate to everyone what you guys had meant to the program, who you were. What did that mean when he did that for you in that moment? Yeah, man, it meant a lot. Like, and that's, like, that's the same, like, a lot of people don't see that side of Coach yeah. Saban, but we get to see that on a daily basis. And it just showed what type of person he is, the humility that he has, the, the humbleness to even stop us like that, that he has. He's just been an awesome man in both of our lives, you know what I'm saying? Like, he has so much respect for us, you know what I'm saying? And um, I can't say enough great things about Coach Saban, man. He's been such a big factor in my life and in Bryce's life, and he's just been great to have around. What's your favorite Saban story? My favorite Saban story is when I graduated from my number to my name. So, like, when you first get there, 
He's like, what's up, 31? Good play, 31. 31, what the, are you doing? And then you start doing good. You start earning the respect. What's up, Will? How you doing? And I swear, the first day I heard him call my name, I almost freaked out. Do you remember when it happened? Yes. It was my freshman year. I think we had just played my first game. I did fairly good for a freshman go playing in Alabama. And I'm walking, and I'm smiling as always. He said, what's up, Will? And I'm like, Coach Will? I said, you talking to me? But that was just a funny moment for me while I was there. You've had a career where you've had success very early in all yeah. the places you've arrived. You mentioned you were, or, or, you were a dominant force at Alabama as a rookie or as a freshman. You come in as a rookie and you have a defensive rookie of the year type season. Has there been a moment over the last three, four, five years that has been a struggle that's kind of re- made you reevaluate the path you needed to take, how you needed to work on yourself? Has, yeah. there, has there been anything like that? Yeah, my last year at Bama, but I will say it came from it came. From for, from more of a standpoint of listening to other people's expectations on me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what kind of got me in that mode. I had a phenomenal season that year. I had double-digit sacks, double-digit tackles for loss, but yet since it wasn't the numbers I had before, I was listening to everybody else's expectation. So it was making me think, like, bro, you're not doing enough. I had won another double-digit sack season that year. <laughs> and that's the only time in my whole career where I felt like, what the world? And now that I'm looking back, looking back at it and being more mature – and having a higher faith for God and knowing who he is and knowing that that's the only approval I need in this world, I'm looking back at it like, bro, like, God's had you all along, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've been good. Like, you've been excelling. You've been doing, being humble, doing everything that you need to do to keep prospering in life. So just that one moment was my my junior year in Alabama was, like, one of the, like, deepest, darkest, like, times I was there. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, life has been great. When it's going well, what gets you up in the morning? Like, like, what drives you to be the best version of yourself each day? The person behind me can take my spot at any time. That's what keeps me going. I have something to prove every day. I have to show you why I'm Will Anderson every day. That's what keeps me going. Like, there's not a day that goes by where I feel like just because I'm starting, I'm safe. That's what keeps me on edge all the time, that this guy behind me can take my spot at any it, time. It, at a certain point, though, it gets hard to keep telling yourself that story no, when you no, keep seeing the way I that you I know, are. but it's just that's just the mentality, yeah. like never being comfortable, always being on edge, like anything can happen, you know what I'm saying? And Have you always th- been wired that way? Always, since like my friends used to hate me in, in <laughs> high school, I promise you, because I used to be so hard on them because I'm like, bro, I see so much in y'all, y'all have so much potential. And I'm like, but y'all going to hate me when this year is over because I'm going to get everything out. Y'all, this is our senior year, too. Y'all going to do something for me. I was the same way. My high school teammates <laughs> absolutely hated me for very similar reasons. And I look back at it now, it's like, is that how I should have handled it? But that's at a certain point, like, you got to look yourself in the mirror at the mm-hmm. end of the day. And did I do enough yep. for the team, for myself? And I think that trying to instill that in other people yep. when you're in a position of leadership, that's exactly what you have to do. Yep. D'Amico, I think we've had such a – exposure to what's how special of a coach he is yeah. and what he's able to do and set the vision of a building when did you know that he was just a little bit different i knew from the first meeting i had what was that first meeting uh my top 30 visit okay my top 30 visit i went to go see them and i was their first visit as well and i was like okay something i'm <laughs> finna go here like i'm their first visit <laughs> <laughs> but um i was just like we were sitting in his office and we were talking and he had leaned back like he leaned back in his chair he wasn't uptight about nothing he wasn't, like, serious about anything. Like, it was normal. It was like I have been knowing him forever. And I was like, this is the type of vibe that I need from a coach at this next level. He was completely chill, like, completely chill. And that's when I knew. I was like, oh, yeah, he's about business, but he's, like, chill about it. Like, he's not uptight. He's not one of those, like, uptight coaches, like, mm-hmm. walking around like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He was cool. And that's when I knew. I said, oh, yeah, this is a perfect fit. What did you guys talk about? Did you talk about your fit in the defense? What you wanted the building to feel like? What was the kind of the meat of that discussion? It was so crazy because, like, we were talking about life. Yeah. Like, we talked a little bit about the defense. He was like, bro, I have no concern about you in this defense. <laughs> like, literally at all. He said, I know you can set an edge. I know you can rush, like, all that. But we were just talking about life. Like, we, we talked about football for, like, three minutes. And then everything else was just, like, family, faith, God, um, like, just how – this process has been going everything like that and when you're able to conversate like that for a long period of time guy you just met then you as you just met that's how you know those are the best relationships like most of my visits that I went on were just football 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 like it was like no really like 
getting to really know you for who you were and everything like that. It was just like, what can you do for my program? And it really wasn't like that with D'Amico. Like, he was just like, what's up? Like, how you been doing? Like, I, would, I just want to know the person will. Yeah. I want to get to know that person. Because he's just, I just heard so many great things about you. I just want to get to know you for myself. So I think that was the most, like, special thing about our relationship. We talk about setting culture and about and how a building how that happens in a building. Yeah. How does he do it? Like, yeah. how does he play a role in what that culture feels like in Houston? I think what separates him from a lot of, like, new head coaches is he set a firm foundation, like a firm, structured foundation of things that we were going to be. We were going to be mean. We were going to be disruptive. We were going to swarm. And that word swarm flooded throughout the whole building. Mm -hmm. Like, if all things else failed, this was the one thing that we were going to do. We were going to swarm. And I think being in a new program, being in a new place, you have to have something of a foundation, a type of structure to fall back on when things don't go right. And I think a lot of times, like, when things wasn't going right for us in the game or anything like that, we just went back to, oh, we just going to swarm. That's it. That's all we got to do. Everybody get to the ball. You can control your effort. That part. Yeah. And that was it, man. And I think that's why it was just so fun playing because that's all he's built on. Is there a moment against C.J. Stroud in practice this year that you just found particularly infuriating? Well, we do compete all the time. And C.J. talks a lot of crap, bro. Like, <laughs> people don't know. C.J. talks a lot of crap. Uh, compete period every Thursday is probably a moment every, every day, <laughs> every week. Is there, like, a throw or, like, it's something that happened where just you're just like, I can't believe that just happened? Just unbelievable throws. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm like, can you save it to Sunday? <laughs> don't do it against us. <laughs> the last thing I'll ask you, you, for every other pass rusher, I would imagine this is an easy answer. Yeah. It, it's, if you could have a sack, you would have a sack. I want, if you could have a sack or, like, an unblocked TFL, mm -hmm. which would you rather have? Which feels better for you in the moment? Sex. It's for I, because th for you, I think it's closer than it would be for most traditional <laughs> pass rushers. But I'm not surprised that you still landed on that. Sacks, bro. Sacks. It did feel different in the league. I'm not gonna lie. Like when you've got your first one. Yeah. Like yeah. getting sacks in the league. You are getting the sack in the NFL, bro. Like that's hard. <laughs> I don't think people understand how hard that it is. It is incredibly hard. Like, if you get one <laughs> a game for the rest, if you get one a game for mm -hmm. your career, you're going to the Hall of Fame as a first ballot Hall bro, of Famer. That's it. Yeah. All right, you're here with Jif, yep. which I love. We're a Jif family. <laughs> I, but I want to ask you, how does Jif play into the Super Bowl? Man, so i ask you a question. At what party that you go to for the Super Bowl, what's probably the number one thing that's going to be there? Wings. Absolutely. Yeah. And what else comes with wings? Celery, fries. But a billion wings get eaten almost every year around the world. And the only thing that gets thrown away is the celery. So we're partnering up with Jif to save the celery. <laughs> And we got some peanut butter to go with it, man. So it's going to be the, you know, the new best rookie edition that we got. And this is just the beginning, man. I'm super excited to be partnering with them, man, and my love for peanut butter. And, yeah, it's going to be fun. You guys have a monopoly on rookie editions at this point <laughs> down in Houston. So this is just another one. Well, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we just get some time. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks.